Women's Junior Grad right now and I came to the building where I lived before and I lived in Zvinograd uh, for about two years when I was 16 and uh, 17. So today I'm going to make uh, an excursion around uh, Zvinograd for you. Zelenograd was founded 37 kilometers from Moscow in the territories of the village of Krukovo and nearby villages. The creation of a new satellite city began in 1960. In 1965, Zelenograd became the 21st district of Moscow. By 1986, more than 150,000 people already lived in the area. In 1966, it was already possible to get from Moscow to Zelenograd by bars number 400, which runs along the Zelenogradsky Highway. The Zelenogradsky Highway was free at that time. Buses reached Moscow in just half an hour. This made life much easier for Boris, who came to work in the townspeople, because the capital theaters, museums and shops have become more accessible, and at first it was possible to get to Zelenograd only by train. The city was originally conceived as a center for the textile industry, but was eventually transferred to create a center for microelectronics. It was supposed to become an analog of the American Silicon Valley. This happened thanks to Soviet American intelligence officers. In 1950, American counterintelligence uncovered a large-scale intelligence network of Soviet spies. The main accused were the communist spouses Julius and Ethel Rosenberg. Three years later, they were executed by electric chair. Two defendants managed to escape. The first is Joel Barr. He was born in 1916 in New York to Vinyamin Zbarsky and Rebecca Dobrovolskaya. They were Jewish emigrants and came to the United States from Russian Empire. The second is Alfred Rand, born in 1918 in the family of a Greek emigrant. Both of them joined the Communist League during their studies. Marxism began to gain popularity in the United States during the interval period, especially in New York, crowded with emigrants. Since 1940, Boris Arendt and Rosenberg worked in the laboratories of the USA Army Signal Corps. They held low-level positions and, unlike their more senior colleagues, had unfettered access to a wide range of confidential technologies and could copy documents. They then worked for Western Electric. As a result, during the war years, Boris and Seren through Rosenberg handed over 9,000 pages of documents to the Soviet side. Mara and Soren, the only ones from the Rosenberg network, were able to escape and evade American trusties. In Czechoslovakia, they received new names and biographies. Bar became Berg and Sarend became Staras. In 1956, Berg and Staras, together with their families, moved to the USSR. Their arrival was received very positively, and the most comfortable working conditions were organized for them. They and their team made many successful projects. One of the most significant developments of their team was the UM-2 onboard computer designed to equip ships and aircraft. Once Nikita Khrushchev visited their office, Nikita Khrushchev was greatly impressed and all this led to Khrushchev agreeing to turn the satellite town of Zelenograd, which was supposed to become a center of textile industry, as you know, into a microelectronics center. The country's first portable electrocardiograph was created in Zelenograd, and multi-layer multi-chip microsockets were developed and produced, providing a more dense arrangement of elements in the device. The most widespread professional and school personal computers in the country were manufactured at Quant. 
At that time, professional personal computers were expensive, so simply and cheaper household computers were made. They were connected to a household TV as a monitor and a tape recorder as an external memory. Then computer science began to be taught in schools. For this purpose, special school computers were made that were more powerful than household ones. Zelenograd was a pioneer in leading the country in computerizing educational institutions. And now we will go to this place. We came to Moscow Institute of Electronic Technology, which is a national research institute, as uh, it says here. The MIT, or MIED, as we say in Russian, complex is one of the masterpieces of Soviet modernism. I found an interview on the Leningrad website where an invited guest shares memories of his studies in Soviet times at MIED. When entering MIED, in Russian manner, or MIET, you had to sign a non disclosure notice. The very name Moscow Institute of Electronic Technology was secret. They also discuss in the interview the fact that Zelenograd was a closed city at the time. One day, Dmitry Fanerov from the KGB, or KGB in Russian manner, and who at one time served in the security of Mikhail Gorbachev, told an invited guest that the security system of Zelenograd included one more detail. In those days, each bus number 400 heading to Zelenograd carried one KGB agent in civilian clothes who was supposed to identify and catch spies and foreigners in general. The veracity of this story is also evidenced by another that happened to one of his comrades as he continues. This was in 1984 or 1985. His friend met students of the Moscow Conservatory of South American region, either from Brazil or from Venezuela, and they went to Zelenograd. Before they had time to enter the apartment, there was a knock on the door, people in civilian clothes. They asked foreigners to leave and his friend had enormous troubles at work. Now I would like to visit with you a couple of monuments which are dedicated to those who fight in the Great Patriotic War. The Great Patriotic War is a period of time when German troops attacked USSR from 1941 to 1945. Sometimes I will call it just World War II or the Second World War. During the World War II, German troops failed to reach Moscow. Here, the enemy were stopped and turned back. The Red Army won its first major strategically important victory. This happened on Krukova land, where Zelenograd later grew up. The monument to the defenders of Moscow was opened in June 1974, and it is located on the 14th kilometer of the Leningradskaya Highway at the entrance to Zelenograd. And here it says that motherland will never forget her sons. Let me share the memories of the Krukova resident. In 1941, she was a senior student at the Krukova school. Krukova was occupied for a week from December 1st to December 6, 1941. On the night of December 7th, there was a roar louder than usual. Sitting on the earthen floor, huddled together, waiting for death, we suddenly felt some kind of relief. The next day, we were discovered by supper soldiers, young guys. People were hiding in duckouts. After the liberation of the village from the Germans, sappers carefully cleared mines. During the retreat, the Germans left mines in houses, barns, basements, roads, stoves, attics, ditches, etc. Mines were found everywhere. Residents began to leave their dugouts and began to return to their broken, lopsided houses. On December 8, at 11 o'clock, bread was brought to us by truck from Himki. We were very happy about these products, because sitting in the dugout, we didn't eat anything for a week. We had no food, and instead of water, we used snow. The line to receive bread started at 4 p.m., and the bread was delivered at 11 a.m. The winter of 1942 was very cold, snowy, frost reached minus 32 to 33 degrees. They stood for bread all night, there were no other products. During the retreat, the Germans doused everything with gasoline. 
Also, our cabbage didn't burn. It was impossible to eat. For her and her mother, her father was repressed in 1937, and for residents, 1942 was the most difficult year. The house was broken, the woodshed burned down, the ceiling collapsed, and an icy wind was blowing. This victory on December 8, 1941, marked the beginning of a turning point in the war and influenced the course of the Great Patriotic War. Then, T-34, or T-34, as we say in Russian, has been mass-produced since 1940, and it became the symbol of the Second World War. That's why there are many monuments to it in our country. In 1851, the railway connection between Moscow and St. Petersburg officially opened and along with it the Krukova station, around which modern Zelenograd was built. During the Great Patriotic War, the station was blown up and lost most of its buildings. On the eve of the arrival of the Germans, our soldiers during their retreat received the order, leave nothing to the enemy. The station, bridge, platforms, railway workers' houses and school turned into ruins. The history of Krukova station continues, and now it looks like this. There was a grandiose reconstruction here as part of the Moscow Central Diarmitis project. Thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to leave like.